Beautiful. Good morning, church. Good morning. Right. That sounds pretty good. It sounds like you're a live, alert, awake, enthusiastic. It's Palm Sunday. There was a great triumphal entry, and we're celebrating that on Palm Sunday. We've got some palms here to, to help remind us visually. Uh, so we're here to celebrate, and so I want to invite you to do that. Uh, we've gathered in this place. There's one quick announcement I want to share with you. I got a, a, some communication from James Forrester that's the pastor over at the, the Concord Church here in town, and uh, wanted to invite us. They're going to do a Good Friday service in Freedom Park. And so they want that open and wanted to invite us to that. So if you're interested in that, I invite you to, to join with us there at 6.30, 6.30 to 7.30 Friday evening here in Freedom Park. So otherwise, uh, there's things coming up. I think uh, April 12th, we've got a worship team meeting to uh, continue the conversation about how we move back into being in more normal times. So I'm excited about that. And I'm sure you are as well as we see more and more people getting vaccinated and we see the numbers continuing to decline a little bit. We've been in the yellow here in, in uh, White County in Cleveland for almost three weeks now. So that's an exciting news and I'm hoping and praying that it stays there. There's some conversations about different things boosting that back up, I hear. But so far, White County, we're staying low. So y'all keep up the good work. All right. So other than that, I think uh, that gets us caught up to the moment. Next week is Easter Sunday. Uh, I'm a mixed bag this year as we move through Holy Week. I've been accustomed to having a lot of different services through Holy Week, uh, helping commemorate different things. We're going to try to do all of that today. Um, I know, it's a, a tall order, but I feel compelled to do that, and, and I'm, I'm somewhat grateful uh, and, and remorseful all in the same breath. As I'm dealing with things at my house, it's good that we don't have a whole lot going on this week. But, uh, but I certainly miss that, those points of commemoration throughout the week of Holy Week. So uh, we move through this Holy Week in the way we have to in this time and look forward to next year a full celebration of Holy Week and Easter as we move into that. Amen? Amen. So, but today we've gathered. It's Palm Sunday. There was a great celebration, and now you are part of that celebration. So I invite you into this moment to celebrate this moment and mark as we worship together that you are there as Jesus is entering Jerusalem. With that, I invite you to pray with me. Won't you pray with me? Lord, as we gather in this moment, we invite you into this space, into this place. Lord, may everything that happens here bring glory to you. May it lift you up and glorify you. We pray these things in the strong and precious name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able and sing our opening hymn with this number 278. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. We'll sing the first and last verse. <laughs>
Sometimes these are easier to wear than, than others. Good morning. I want to start our time, our prayer time, with a with an update that I know you'll all be glad to hear about. Uh, we had uh, mentioned Tom and Joyce Locke the other day and, and the challenges they were going through. Well, Tom had left a message, and I wanted to share with you all uh, a little bit about it. Uh, he and Joyce had both been faced with COVID-19, and they had a, a really difficult time with it. Um, Tom had uh, called the church and, and give us nothing on his health. They, they were doing better. Uh, he's being weaned off the oxygen, and they hope to see us soon. So that's, that's great news. But uh, he also wanted to extend to his church family a special thank you for the outreach, for the calls, the meals, the, you know, the, the letters, the cards, whatever. He, he was just, uh, he was just uh, an abundance, an abundance with it. And uh, so I'm, on behalf of him, I want to say thank you for that. It was great. Great. It's great to hear that he's doing so much better. Yeah. Give you one more update. Tom William actually went and visited with him this week, and they are doing much better. They're home, and uh, so uh, they're they're probably about 95, 98 percent mended at this point. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Uh, I want to also remember, um, continue to remember Cindy's cousin Sonia Brand, who is uh, who has been diagnosed with cancer. I want to continue to keep her in her prayers as she faces this battle. Uh, also, her family uh, as well. Sandy's husband, Dennis. Dennis is about to face a second surgery, so let's let's keep him in our prayers and pray that this this surgery will do what it's supposed to do. The previous surgery was, I think, to prepare for this one. So uh, this hopefully will be the final surgery. So let's keep her and and Dennis and their families in our prayers as well. Are there others? Would you bow with me silently, please? Almighty God, we come to you this morning with humble and open hearts. Thankful that you have allowed us to assemble yet once again. With that in mind, keep, let us keep the knowledge that wherever we are, whether it's in this building, outside these walls, we are the church. Help us to live that in everything that we say, think, and do. Let it be seen in our actions. Father, with these requests that we have this morning, we lay at your feet because you told us we could. You told us that we could lay them there and walk away with complete 
and trust. So, Father, with that knowledge, we continue to lift up Tom and Joyce. We pray for their continued healing. We pray for Sonia Brand as she faces this battle with cancer, that you would anoint the hands of the doctors who treat her. We pray for Dennis. Father, we pray that you would just give these physicians skill to heal his body. We pray for Sandy as well. As she takes on the role of caregiver, that you give her strength and patience. Father, we pray for Matthew, Kathy Matthews. We lift her up to you today. And we pray that her journey be a peaceful one. For Darla Hodges, we ask you, dear Lord, to intercede here. That you would that you would take control of this, that you would heal her body. And for Bonnie. We ask you, dear God, today, we lift up Bonnie to you, we give her to you, and we say to you, please heal her. Make her body well. It's that simple. Father, again, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us, for each and everything that you do. And as we come here today on this special Sunday, help us to realize and live the significance in each and everything we do. And Father, as we come to you, we finalize with a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. It meant so much. To this day, it still has such, such meaning. He prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Well, you've got to go almost all these years without me saying anything. <laughs> Um, this church has been uh, a rock in a very, uh, I didn't practice this very well beforehand, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a very slippery time, I guess, in my life. For the last 10 years, I've been through a cancer diagnosis. Um, my mother was diagnosed with dementia, and we went through a lot of things there. I lost my dad and my mom within the span of nine months. Um, my husband told me at one point in these last 10 years that he's not a believer, doesn't believe in God. And that was very difficult, this continues to be a difficult time for me. Um, and through several pastors, <laughs> and now my hair is white. <laughs> but, uh, wow, have I appreciated you guys. On the days that some of the choir members know that I could barely get myself up here to the piano, and they called me for it. And uh, I had a friend years ago who told me, many, many years ago, that I cry recreationally. <laughs> so, um, the choir and many people here, Emily and David and others, have learned very quickly that I can cry really easily at the easiest things. But uh, this song this morning for me is one that is very emotional. I may not be able to get all the notes quite right because I'm already shaking a little bit. Um, it's one of my favorite hymns when I survey the wondrous cross. And uh, there's a part after the first verse in the middle of this song that is to represent that Christ is making his way to uh, Calvary. And then as he's being kind of lapped back, you can kind of hear that with the high piano notes at one point, the sort of, a, or you could even interpret it as a women crying out if you wanted to. Um, and then you will hear the three booms of the nails. And uh, the next verse, if you look at the hymn, is C, Oh, somebody help me. See, from it his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow, streaming down. I think that's what it says. So you can hear that in this song, 
And at the very end, you'll hear the, the joy, the, the excitement of the last word of the one I survey, the wonders cross. That, uh, uh, wow, the words are, you can open the hymn book and look at the words while I'm singing. Okay, I'm done.
Kelly. That was beautiful. these systems back down to where I'm seamless. I like, would be much more preferable if everything was seamless, you know, right? But hey, that's a, that's my life right now, right? So um, today we're going to have a conversation, and, and again, just so you know where we're going, it's going to be a sprint, uh, uh, be with me. But today we've gathered and, and we're, we're remembering Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, an event that Many there believed to be the beginning of his ascension to the throne of Israel. Make sure you get this picture. In some of their minds and thinking, this would have been akin to a coronation. This was huge. Jesus was checking off boxes in the prophecy department. Even in this moment, uh, we see the, the donkey prophecy of Zechariah 9.9 that Matthew alludes to it in his gospel is fulfilled. This was a marvelous celebration. As Jesus was greeted as king, palm branches waved and thrown on the road as he processed with his entourage into Jerusalem, people throwing their cloaks down on the path to cushion his journey, people singing and praising God for this provision. At last, the long-awaited Messiah has come to claim and establish the new Israel and redeem it from the oppression of the Romans that they were experiencing. What an amazing experience that must have been. What a scene. Listen to how it's described in John's gospel in the 12th chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. The next day, the great crowd that had come for this festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Won't you pray with me? Lord, as we gather in this place, may the words that I say, the things that come out of my mouth, and all the things that we're thinking about in these next few moments, bring a smile to your face and bring glory to your name. We pray these things in the strong name of your son, Jesus, and all God's children said. Amen. Now, I want you to picture this scene. In fact, I want you to try to put yourself in this scene. See if you can find yourself in here. Maybe you're one of the ones that was out in front and was throwing your cloak out on the path. Is that you? Maybe you'll be one of the ones that's singing in the crowd. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Y'all not going to continue? So that wasn't y'all? Maybe one of yours is just in the background yelling, Blessed is the King of Israel. Well, would you be a little behind the scene? Praying and thanking God for this provision of this Messiah that had been long promised. And the deliverance that this brought that signals for you and for the children of God in Israel. Regardless of where you find yourself in this scene, this was an historical moment. Greater than any presidential inauguration, greater than any king's coronation or royal wedding or anything that you can possibly manage. Whatever great moment comes to your mind. This was bigger. Interestingly, most of the folks who experienced it didn't really understand exactly what they were experiencing. They thought it was big, but they had no idea. They thought they were ushering in a king when in fact they were actually welcoming God incarnate in the, in the human form of Jesus. This was a breathtaking moment. So, that is what starts this liturgical moment we now refer to as Holy Week. My experience has led me to believe that many disciples, followers of Jesus, now experience this moment in worship on Palm Sunday, this celebration, 
and then experience move right on to Easter and the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus, Easter Sunday, and yet never experience the rest of Holy Week. And to be honest, even strong believers miss that the most important part of all of Holy Week comes not on Sunday, but on Friday. Good Friday. Have you ever wondered why they call it Good Friday? I'll leave you to ponder that. I want to invite you to lace up your shoes. This is going to be a sprint because in the next few minutes, what I want to do is run through a synopsis of Holy Week. And, and just as John records it, keeping in mind that there's a lot of other details that are omitted from John's gospel that we know from the other accounts. But this is what John had to say about Holy Week. We started in John 12 with the 12th chapter as we read about the, the triumphal entry. And then right after that, we, we see Jesus speaking about his death to the disciples. We talked about that last week. Then in verse 37, uh, we see Jesus talking about and, and the crowd talking about this disbelief. They could not believe that the plan was that Jesus would die. That just didn't make sense. It's not the way they pictured it. Then we move into the 13th chapter of John. And in the first part of that, we see Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And we see two things here. One, Jesus is teaching what it means to be a servant. And the second thing is, is that he's modeling it for the disciples, right? Later in the 13th chapter, Jesus predicts this betrayal that's coming. And then it, you know, later on, starting in verse 31 of the 13th chapter, Jesus actually predicts Peter's denials of Jesus. Keeping in mind in the midst of all this, they're all, this is not the way they're writing this map out, but this is what Jesus is telling them. But in verse 37, we see Peter, who once again is not quite on the right page yet, but he's telling Jesus, no, man, I'll lay down my life for you. Another one of those moments where the, the expression is there, the heart is there, but the body just won't cooperate later on, will it? In the 14th chapter, we see Jesus trying to comfort them as they're processing this and in disbelief. In the first four verses, he talks about, I'm going to prepare a place for you. After that, he, he shares the, thing, the concept of, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to, to the Father but through me. And then he spends some time talking to them about the promised Holy Spirit and what that means. Then in verse 15, another one of the moments uh, that's recorded that's that's very popular, uh, is, the, is a series of teachings. And, and one of them is on the vine and the branches. Y'all remember that one? Uh, the, and then he moves into this whole conversation about the world is going to hate the disciples. It's going to hate you and me as we follow Christ. And then he concludes that teaching moment, uh, again, talking about the work of the Holy Spirit. And then in, verse, in chapter 16 of John, more teaching. In verse 1, he, he shares with them, all this as I have told you so that you will not fall away, indicating that something tragic is coming that would drive them away from this moment. Grief is coming. And then as he concludes this chapter in the 33rd verse, he helps them understand or at least have information that this grief will turn to joy. He shares with them this. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble. They don't even know what's coming, but he's... He's given them the information that they need to know. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Then in chapter 17, we see an image of Jesus in prayer. And we see three different sections of this chapter. In the first one, he's praying that, that he and God would be glorified in this moment as they move toward the cross. And then he spends some time praying specifically for the disciples that they would be strong. And then finally, it concludes with, a, uh, with information about Jesus praying for all believers. And just so you get it, in that moment, Jesus is praying for you and for me. We were a part of that moment, whether we wanted to be or not, whether we thought we were or not, because we were on the heart of Jesus. And then in, in chapter 18, we see this moving into Thursday night. And uh, in the first bit of it, we see Jesus is arrested. And then starting in 15, uh, we see Peter's first denial. Predictions coming true in this, in this scenario. And then in verse 19, we see that Jesus is being questioned by the high priest. And if you know that story in the midst of that, as Jesus responds to one of the priest's statements, uh, one of the 
guards feels like he's being insolent and slaps him. And Jesus responds, what did I do to deserve that? But that slap becomes, in my mind, it's a, a critical piece of the, of the story. Uh, then in verse 25, we see more denials. We see Peter once again completing this process that Jesus had predicted. And then we see Jesus before Pilate. And in part of that conversation in verse 36, Jesus responds to one of Pilate's inquiries this way. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Then in verses 38 uh, through 40, we see the crowd beginning to turn. As they begin to, as Pilate offers them the opportunity, Pilate is looking desperately for ways to release Jesus to not move through any more of this farce. Uh, he says, I will release one of the prisoners. This is our custom. He says, who would you like me to release? And he's fully anticipating and hoping and expecting that they're going to start shouting the name of Jesus. And what do they do? They begin to shout the name of Barabbas. And then in chapter 19, we see four distinct parts of the, the scenario taking place. Is This is on Friday. We see the sentencing. We see the cross. We see the death. And we see the burial. In verse 6, we have this quote. Uh, as soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. And in this moment, we see the turn of the crowd is complete. They have completely moved from Sunday when they were chanting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and shouting Hosanna to crucify him. Then in verses 16 through 27, we see the cross. We see this, the scene of Jesus carrying the cross through Jerusalem. And then we have the recounting of the sign that Pilate has placed above Jesus that so offended the Jewish officials. And it simply said, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. We see more prophecy being fulfilled as we see the, the guards uh, arguing over his clothing and casting lots for his garment, as we see that fulfilled from Psalms 22, 18. And then in verses 25 through 27, we see this scene develop as Jesus is hanging on the cross, nearing the end of his life, and he looks down and sees his mother Mary and his best friend John. And he looks at him and says, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son, John. And then we see in verses 28 through 37, we see the recording of, in John's gospel of the death of Jesus. And it, a particular note is, are these quotes from verse 30. As Jesus is there and he says this, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now I want you to understand that it's in that moment, it's finished right there. Not in the resurrection. This is the point. The pinnacle of the story. And even in the death of Jesus, we see more prophecies being fulfilled. In verse 36, there's a discussion about no bones being broken. And in verse 37, it talks about the one who was pierced. In verses 38 to 42, we see the recording, John's recording of the burial. And we see the entrance of this character, Joseph of Arimathea. We don't know a whole lot about him, but the things that we do know, we can glean a little bit from three of the Gospels that record his presence in the story. And in Matthew 27, 57, we understand that he was a rich man. He was a means. In Mark 15, 43, we understand that he was a member of the council. And all three of these Gospel accounts that record Joseph's of of Messiah all suggest that he was a secret follower of Jesus. Remember that. He was a secret follower of Jesus. Well, that's the run-through of Holy Week. And I want you to understand a lot of this and, and see this in a bigger picture. Uh, Tony Campolo, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with that name, but he preached an amazing message uh, that I got to hear him preach live the first time I heard it. And since then, I've heard it many times on video. If you've never seen this message, go look it up. Uh, I'm not even going to try to give, do it justice, but I want to uh, relay the hook of his message is this. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. 
And it's Friday and it talks about all of the grief and torment and torture that comes on Friday. All of these things that are not as anyone had pictured, but it is what it is. And it is what it is for a reason. But Sunday's coming. There's a reason for hope. And the resurrection is the proof of what happened on Friday. None of this is the way that anybody that was participating in this scenario pictured it. Except for Jesus. If you run through Holy Week and have the Palm Sunday celebration experience and then go straight to Easter resurrection celebration, you miss the whole point. If the celebration is the important part, why did Jesus have to die? It's that whole, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. That John 12, 24 thing. It's that whole if I be lifted up thing that we talked about last week. The sacrifice that was made on the cross is what literally and physically frees us all and frees all of creation from the grip of sin and death. And now we have the freedom to reestablish our, my relationship with God as God desires it to be. Hear these words of Jesus that John records again in the 12th chapter, but beginning in the 47th verse. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. None of this was the way I would have written it. None of this was the way any of us would have pictured this thing going. But here's the bottom line. I don't think anyone who was celebrating Jesus' entry into Jerusalem that day had any clue that four days later they would be screaming, crucify him at the top of their voice. What happened is not the way they pictured it, but it was what God and God's Son and God's Spirit had planned even as they created Adam. This season of Lent is all about us remembering that we are sinners in need of a Savior, which requires a sacrifice that Jesus willingly made on the cross. The pinnacle of this holy season is Friday. Good Friday. In that moment, everything changed forever for the better. It may not be the way any of us pictured it, but it is exactly the way it should be. I'll leave you with the words from much earlier in John, in fact, in the first chapter, the 29th verse. And this is as John is in the Jordan River baptizing, and Jesus walks into his view. Many of you will remember these words, and I'll share them in the King James Version that so many of us are familiar with. Behold the Lamb of God. That takes away the sins of the world. Won't you pray with me? Lord, as we experience this week, I pray that you would help us to experience this in ways that help us understand better the sacrifice you made for us, to help us understand better our need for redemption from the sin that is in our lives. <clears throat> Lord, help us find you and know you more intimately and more deeply in this moment than ever before. Help us understand the, the darkness of the cross, but the light that comes behind it. The grief of Friday but also the joy that comes 
in the resurrection of the world that you created and for us as your creation. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You're almost near to your side, but we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. And all God's children said, Amen. We're not worshiping as we normally would, but I want to continue to remind and encourage you to complete your worship experience by the things that you do. One of the things that, that we do as believers is to give of ourselves. Why do we give of ourselves? Because we can? Because Jesus asked? Yes. Because God has given to us, he invites us to give back to him. And so as you do that, the way we're doing it in these moments is there's a basket down on the door as you come in. And I invite you to, to leave your offerings there. And as you do that, I invite you now, let's pray over those offerings that, that God may bless them and bless the givers and the receivers. Lord, we thank you for the provision that you have given us in so many different ways. We thank you ultimately for the provision of a Savior in Jesus. But we thank you for the financial and physical provision that you have given us as well. Lord, as part of our thankfulness, we offer back a portion of that as you have requested. So that we can keep from becoming bonded to the things and be bonded to you. So we give back to you, letting go of those things that you have given us. We invite you to receive them, to bless them and use them. Use them in ways that we can't even imagine. That this place, Cleveland United Methodist Church, might become a beacon of light in this community and in the world that you have created. But we pray these things again in the strong and precious name of your son, Jesus. And all God's children say, Amen. Won't you stand as you're able and let's join in the doxology.
We've been the, the recipient of gifts over the last 10 or years or so from a, a part of our crew that is, uh, God has opened another door for. And so uh, it's, it's with both a heavy heart and a hopeful heart that uh, we need to share with you that Charlene has uh, been placed in a, in a new environment and uh, will only be with us through next week. And so uh, as part of our celebration of, of her presence with us, I want to invite you to bring and shower her with cards, and that can be gift cards and checks and all kind of however you want to shower her. Uh, the, there's a basket down on the table in the gathering area today, uh, but bring those next week, and we will celebrate her as part of our Easter celebration. Don't shower uh, me with water. No water. No so, water. Yeah. <laughs> Had enough of that for the day. So. <laughs> But with that, uh, you know, we are all offered areas of ministry, whether we realize it or not, whether we exercise it or not. But in this moment, I want to invite you to go into this week looking for opportunities to share the love that Jesus has shared with you. Jesus loved each one of you so much that he laid down his life for you. Go and do likewise. May the one who created it be with you now and forever. Go in his peace and grace. Amen. 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 Amen.